Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build my first tank from the Flames of War Comet Armoured Squadron. There was a poll over on Patreon to decide which of these models came first, and the Challenger was chosen, so that's what I'll be building, if the title didn't give that away. The Challenger does come in its own box as well as the Comet box, if you would prefer to buy them on their own, and I can't imagine the sprues in that box being any different to this one. The Challenger comes on a single sprue, of which we get four, and there aren't all that many parts on it, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the Comet Armoured Squadron overview video, which is conveniently linked in the description. Anyway, the sprues are nice and neatly moulded. These are of the high quality I would expect from Battlefront's new plastics. There's a fairly good amount of detail here, especially when you consider that this is quite a small model at 100th scale, and the fact that it is a wargaming kit. It does have some of the common compromises you would see in a kit like this, like the solid brush guards for the headlamps, and some simplification of detail, but that's really not a problem. Here's the decals I got with the Comet box. I'm not exactly sure what comes in the standalone Challenger kit, it is probably something different, likely a bit more simple, but it could be something way cooler, I just don't know. And to be honest, I don't really feel like buying the box just to find out. The Getting Started booklet in the Comet box has an assembly diagram for this kit, which is quite basic, and that's because this is obviously quite a simple kit. If you don't like those instructions, you can also find some on the Flames of War website. I'll put a link for that in the description. Alternatively, you could continue watching this video to see how it goes together. I mean, you're already here, so why not? Before I start gluing bits of plastic together, I magnetise the turret. I just feel like magnets are a better choice than using the included turret mounting pins. To keep the polarity of the magnets consistent, I use a magnet on a stick. I have done a video about this before, but why not show it here? This is simple and probably obvious. You hold the magnet on a stick under the hull top like so, and as you can see, on the upside I've written up to show that it's the upside. You use super glue because magnets are metal, and you simply drop the magnet into place. You can buy the magnets from Battlefront, but I bought mine elsewhere at a lower cost. These magnets are 4.75mm wide and 1mm thick, which is just a little bit too thick to have both magnets in the recesses moulded into the parts. It'll prevent the turret from sitting properly on the hull, and we probably don't want that. The solution is to glue the magnet on the inside of the turret bottom part, which is done pretty much exactly the same way as the hull. And now we've got turrets that will stay on their hulls with all but the roughest of handling, but still be easy enough to remove to represent a knocked out tank. Okay, that's enough super glue. let's glue some bits of plastic together. The first step is to attach the track sets to the hull. These are keyed so it's very easy to get them on the right way around. If you couldn't tell that you were doing it wrong, the keying should stop you, unless you're really determined. This assembly is obviously quite easy, being single piece track sets. The tread detail is of course simplified, as is usually the case in wargaming kits, but they look great from the side. The hull top goes on next, and you probably won't be surprised to hear that this goes on nice and easy. I did apply some pressure to make sure everything was nice and gap free, but it went willingly, so I didn't need to use a lot of force. The tank's butt goes on next, or if you want to be less technical, you could call it the rear of the hull. And why not follow this with the upper front plate? This also pretty much just drops right into place, though I did find I had to press it inwards at the bottom a little bit, just so that it would be properly vertical. And that's the basic hull together. But if you wanted, there are some other optional parts that you could put on. The first of which is this little box, which is probably for storing tea. It seems to go here on the left rear, though you could probably put it just about any way you want. I then attach this exhaust cowling to the engine deck. This doesn't really have any keying per se, but it is shaped such that it should be pretty easy to tell when you've got it in the correct position. I don't know that it was common for challengers to have this cowling, but I'm sure some did and I think it looks cool so I decided to build most of my challenges with it. On the engine deck I add this piece of stowage. Again there's no real keying for this, which does make sense. Not everybody's going to want to use this, but it does kind of just plop into place nice and easy. I then add the spare wheel. You could place this just about anywhere really, either on the hull or the turret. Or you could choose not to use it at all, that is kind of why they call it an optional part. 
Anyway, that's the hole done, so now it's turret time. I start by gluing the top and bottom of the turret together, which, as you can see, is very simple. Then, on the front, I glue the front of the turret, if you would believe that. I did have to apply a tiny bit of gap reducing pressure to this, but it does fit pretty well. To fill the hole in the turret roof, I add a commander's hatch. Obviously I'm using the closed hatch, but there is an open one too, into which you would put the commander figure, if you're into that sort of thing. On the back of the turret, I add this hatch. This is keyed, so it's pretty much impossible to get it wrong, though if you really want to, I believe in you. Then, on the front of the turret, I add the main gun. The barrel of the gun does have a solid end, and if you really wanted, you could drill it out to make it look a bit more convincing, but it is quite small. I felt the risk of damaging it was too high, so I chose not to drill it out, but if you wanted, and you had small enough drill bits, you could. The gun does have keying, which makes it easy to get the muzzle brake oriented correctly. It does have a lot of play to it though, so it'll take some eyeballing and kajiggering to get it on nice and straight. And that's the turret done. We can use the miracle of magnets to drop the turret nicely into place. Nice and easy. And that's it. The Flames of War Challenger, in plastic, is completed. Not exactly a challenge, but it was fun, and I'm quite pleased with the result. It is a less common and, I think, rather interesting looking tank, and it's nice to see one in 15mm scale, especially in plastic. The model was, as you probably saw, fairly simple and quick to build, though of course that's not unusual for a wargaming kit. The Comet Armored Squadron box includes four of these tanks, and you could probably whip up all four of them in a couple of hours, if you take your time. They'll be ready to crush the enemy on the battlefield in short order. I had a lot of fun with this kit, and I'm really glad that I've got more Flames of War stuff to put together. Sure it's not as challenging as some other kits are, but these are good relaxing kits to put together, even if you're not going to use them for gaming. At any rate, they are fun to build, and I think they'll be fun to paint. But while I do plan on painting them relatively soon, I wouldn't hold your breath waiting for it. I don't think you'll make it. If you're a patron, there's a poll to determine the next tank I build from the Comet Armored Squadron box, so go check that out. If you didn't see it, feel free to go and check out my overview video of that box set, which is linked in the description. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you'd like to watch me build kits like this one live, check out my Twitch channel, which is where I stream pretty much all of the builds you see on this channel. You can find the link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about future videos, and if you'd like to see said videos a bit early, before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You could do worse. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.